first just want to say it's good to see everybody in person again. Uh, obviously, a lot of challenges last year, so good to see all of you. Um, hope everybody's doing well. It's uh, obviously good to, good to see just things are progressing. Um, excited for this season. Uh, another new uh, opportunity. Uh, obviously, some changes in the team. I know the guys are excited about our group um, and having, uh, having a good offseason, kind of getting back to something more uh, we're used to with 82 games, you know, starting training camp basically uh, when we normally would, all those types of things. Um, so, uh, and particularly to myself, uh, obviously coming off the injury, uh, really fortunate once again, uh, things progressed as well as they did and um, to have all the help and the support that I had and obviously having the time, um, uh, use it to my advantage and just try and uh, get better, get healthy and, and uh, just get, get myself ready to play and, and work on my game. So looking forward to uh, getting back at it and, and uh, with the opportunity and the team we have this year. So um, yeah, I just want to say a few quick words and obviously uh, take questions now. Thanks, John. We'll go with David Alter from the Hockey News. Hey, John. I'm just curious uh, what the recovery was like because obviously it was a pretty traumatic uh, instance that you had to go through. But um how long did that take from a mental standpoint to clear before you could start training again and, and, and a physical standpoint as well? Yeah, um, I guess to get into uh, a little bit more detail than maybe what uh, all of you know, um, you know, it's, it's as I explain it to people when people ask me or, uh, you know, people when I'm talking to my friends or family kind of as things uh, prog progress coming out of the hospital, I don't obviously I don't have any memory of the incident. Um, um, but I, I um, don't have any, I didn't have any symptoms, I didn't have any pain, um, you know, other than just being really exhausted, walking out of the hospital, sleeping two or three hours. Um, um, you know, really, I, I kind of got back to myself relatively uh, quickly in, in the matter of those first couple of days after I got some rest and some sleep and some of the shock probably wore off of just being in the, being in the ambulance, being in the hospital and just kind of taking in uh, what I just went through. And I progressed really quickly. After three or four days, I was already um, on the bike, getting my heart rate up. Um, followed that up with, you know, doing a, a light to moderate workout to what uh, I'm sure all of you saw me starting to skate and getting on the ice. So, all that was progressing really well. Uh, how much quickly that would have went uh, if we continued playing, I don't think we'll ever really know. But I think all signs were, were, were pointing in really good directions at the time. Um, when things ended, obviously I then had time to just kind of get away. I put the equipment away right away. Um, you know, I stayed active, uh, just wanted to continue kind of the, the progress that I was making uh, physically, um, you know, just staying fit and, and preparing myself um, to get ready for my off-season program and, and um, you know, getting to that point where you want to be cleared to play again. So I just continued on that progression and there was no hiccups. Um, you know, I know Kyle spoke at uh, some point in July, um, and it was relatively early in July when I kind of passed my final test. I'd already been on the ice a number of, numerous times at that point. Passed my final test to kind of give me the clearance uh, uh, with no restrictions and the full go ahead. So, and everything's been great ever since. So, I think Kyle mentioned that you had a knee injury on the play as well. Yeah, too? The, the, the knee was very, very minor. Okay. Uh, the knee was very minor, and um, you guys saw me skating. Um, it's not something that if I was to return to play, as soon as uh, I was on the ice then, or a few days after that, I wouldn't have been able to play, so. Chris Johnson, sport, uh, Toronto Star. <laughs> hey, John. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it's going well, but you know, I'm wondering then, I'm not sure how intense the skates you've been in in the summer, but do you have any trepidation at all then when, when you're on the ice and back in action with bodies around and everything? No, uh, all that's been great. I think, uh, you know, having the off season and be able to kind of build, uh, uh, over time has been great, you know, just uh, traditionally the way I've approached every off season is, you know, a lot of in, kind of one on one individual work. And there was quite a bit of that last off season in the fall, just because of the restrictions with the pandemic and whatnot. Um, where now, you know, obviously uh, uh, didn't have that, didn't really have that too much to worry about. So just built from there and then skating with more bodies. And then uh, as things picked up throughout the summer, traditionally skates get a little more intense, a little bit tougher. Guys start leaning on each other a little bit more. Nothing quite prepares you for what I'm going to face tomorrow and obviously getting into a game possibly on the weekend. So, um, but uh, I've been treating it like any off season that I've had in the past and everything's been great. So um, obviously just continue to take these steps and, and it'll be great to uh, get into tomorrow um, and obviously the, the next few weeks and, and uh, um, really start to, to get that feel again for the game and, and 
you know, just get past those 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 check marks and, and get and feel good about, uh, you know, I've I've returned to play now. I've come back from the injury and I played a game or I've been through some intense practices where things uh, uh, all matter. Again, you're being judged and, and critiqued, and it's all part of the process. So, um, yeah, looking forward to those steps this week. When you look at the summer, uh, maybe some of the changes that were made are reflected on last season. What areas do you think the team can, you know, where can you improve this season as a team? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Sheldon and, and Kyle have definitely communicated with a lot of us um, where we can be better. Um, you know, we made a lot of strides defensively last year. I know that was a big emphasis uh, for us going into the season last year and the things we worked on. But I think we still feel like there's a lot of uh, areas um, uh, that we can get better at, particularly some of the details when you, when you, you know, dive into certain things as the coaching staff has done. Um, that we can do, and I, I think we, we talked about holding leads and uh, defending down the stretch a, a little better or late in games and, and things like that. Uh, I think we can do um, a much better job of. We can be a little bit more cleaner in, the, in that area. Um, certainly, I think uh, we want, just want to continue to improve in the areas that we made improvements in, and those standards have been set, and how can we make those even better and be even more of a stingy team to play against, a, a, a harder team to play against, more competitive. Um, you know, um, so I think we, we know about the skill and the offense and, and you know, we, we have that. And I think it's continuing to fine tune, fine tune that and reinforce that where we're, we're getting the offense in the ways that are going to lead to success um, over, the, over time and, and in the playoffs. So, um, you know, continuously just trying to improve in all those areas uh, and specifically, like I mentioned, on, on the defensive aspect, how we continue to raise those standards and, um, and, and get into a little bit more detail, just uh, um, being a little bit stronger late in games, protecting leads, and, and just being a very stingy team to play against. Kevin Grant, Toronto Star. Hey, John. You, you played, um, obviously, your final year in Long Island, you, uh, you played without a contract extension. Obviously, you're skating right to a free agency. That Morgan's kind of in the same situation this year. What was that level of uncertainty like for you? What, what, were, what were some of the emotions you felt that year? And what can you say to Morgan to sort of help him through this? Yeah, I, um, for me, I just kind of tried to take it a day at a time. I know it's, it's so cliche, uh, but um, I was excited about the, uh, my last year, an opportunity in, in New York and uh, just another season, another chance to try to win the Stanley Cup and have a good year myself. Uh, um, just kind of stuck to what I did every year. I didn't really want to treat it any differently. Uh, obviously, you know, you acknowledge, you know, that your contract's ending um, and it's there in the back of your mind, but I just got focused in, in the day-to-day -day and being ready to play and doing the best thing I, I could to help my team and my teammates. Um, and obviously I was in New York for a long time and I always thought uh, that it was probably going to work out. Obviously things went uh, in a different route, but um, I just tried to focus on the day-to-day -day and, you know, there's so much that goes into performing and trying to play at an elite level and, and uh, the responsibility you have amongst, uh, amongst the team, amongst the group, you don't want to let anybody down. So I just, just tried to get engulfed in just playing the game and enjoying that and, and you know, that stuff will just kind of take care of itself. Thanks. Pierre LeBron, The Athletic. Hey, John, uh, as the captain uh, of this team, um, you know, what how did it make you feel to, to hear Kyle Dubas come out right after the playoffs and um, double down on his belief in the core of this team and, and resisted what other people thought maybe should have been moves he should look at, basically bringing back the same core? Yeah, very, very happy, very thankful about that because I think we all in, in the locker room completely 100% believe in each other and, and the group that we have, and especially the core group of guys. and, and uh, uh, we know we're putting everything into us every single day, trying to find our way through uh, over these challenges and these hurdles and uh, the things that uh, uh, um, have been tough on us. Um, so, you know, it's not easy to win the Stanley Cup and get to where we want to get to. Uh, we know how competitive, competitive and um, how tight our league is. Um, so I think I said it uh, uh, in the off season and just, just want to keep banging on that door till we knock it down and I and we all truly believe that this group's doing everything they can and and have uh, have what it takes to to do that so um and uh, when you have your manager uh step up and have your back like that uh, um you know it makes everyone feel really good about uh, about things and where we're at and where we're trying to get to and and where we can just kind of keep our focus thanks mark masters tsn hi john uh, in the wake of the playoff loss, how did you and the rest of the leadership group uh, kind of process that and move past it? And what was that like? 
Uh, yeah, the loss obviously was pretty miserable and disappointing. Uh, hard to take. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, it's it's always going to have some type of uh, you know scar or mark just because I think the type of season and the expectations we created for ourselves and getting to the point where we were at and and, uh, and not finishing job not finishing the job in the first round and getting getting that next opportunity. So. I think for us, it's obviously just a motivating factor, an opportunity to try to learn and reflect. Um, now, there's a lot of work and time to get to where we want to get to. So, you know, first step in order, I think we've we talked about is just how can we just start off with a really good training camp and prepare ourselves for an 82 game grind that uh, we're going to be facing uh, with the Olympics and all those other things that are going to be part of this season um, and different challenges of the pandemic that uh, are presenting now. So, I think it's just kind of slowly trying to trying to turn the page and. Uh, reflect and, and, and also just trying to stay really present and know that uh, we got to take care of business now to get that opportunity that we want again. And what stood out to you about the way Sheldon and Kyle handled the aftermath in this off season? Yeah, I, I mean, I think they're they're trying to uh, lead the way and, and helping us uh, uh, prepare and get ready and understand the challenges that we we have faced and the f challenges that will be facing us ahead and. How can we grow, learn, and adapt, and get better from uh, what we went through, um, the positive and the negative side of it? So, um, you know, I look at it a lot just kind of internally and in the discussions that we've had or the meetings that we've had or uh, the messages that are being sent and, and the way uh, we're communicating things. And that's kind of kind of the way it's been is how can we uh, um, push forward and, and learn from this and um, take the things that went really well, uh, continue to grow and to adapt and, and mature ourselves as people and, and uh, our games as hockey players and obviously collectively as a group. Last two with Luke and Josh. Go ahead, Luke. Hey, Don. Um, how badly do you want to make Team Canada? How much has that been on your mind? Yeah, really bad. Uh, it's a special thing to be a part of. Um, I'm really fortunate that I got the experience in Sochi. Uh, got to play and represent my country at the Olympics and win a gold medal. Um, I would love an opportunity to play in the semifinal in the gold medal game. It obviously didn't end individually, uh, particularly the way I would have hoped. But um, you know, you go there as part of a team, as a hockey team, but even a bigger team um, representing your country and, and the Canadian Olympic team and all of Canada. So, um, you know, I'd like to think I'd have another chance in four years again. But uh, I think as you get older, chances always get a little bit slimmer. Historically, that's what it's taught you. Uh, never going to close the door. But uh, obviously, this would be a great opportunity, something I really want to be a part of. And uh, um, yeah, it, it would be great. So um, definitely been a, uh, a big motivating factor. But at the same time, I think um, in kind of the way I answered the free agency question, I think just worrying about taking care of things here and just playing my game and worrying how to make Maple Leafs the, the best possible team we can and how I contribute to that, uh, let that take care of itself. And just a thought on Josh Ho Hosang, your paths crossed on the island. Have you given him, had any conversations with him? How does he look in the, the pre pre camp skates so far? Yeah, I think just kind of reconnecting and, and getting to see him again has been great. I know he's uh, been here at the facility training but the last six weeks or so uh, since free agency and really trying to give himself the best possible opportunity to show that uh, you know he can he can make a difference and, and be a part of the organization and um, be, be a be a great asset because obviously his skill and his, his potential is uh, is through the roof so I think you notice a sense of maturity definitely from him even just the way he's carrying himself and handling him around the rink and uh, uh, the workouts and and uh, um, just you know, the, his interactions with the guys and, and, and whatnot. So uh, he's been great. I know he's excited and motivated. So it's, uh, it's great, to, great to have him be a part of the group here and, and uh, um, just knowing uh, the potential that he has. He could, could be something that could really work out for us. Josh, go pretend CP. Yeah. John, uh, just going back to Kyle, when he was talking to us, he talked about how there's the, the 54 year is not a burden for, for that group, but there is a burden of the last five years for some, for you the last three, being the team captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs is a burden. What is that burden like? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I just, I love to play the game and I, I think playing in Toronto's, you know, it's hard to think about getting it much better than that. It's just the, the opportunity, the support, the tradition, the history. Um, just go out there and make the most of it and, you know, put your best foot forward. I think, you know, trying to worry about the what ifs and the hypotheticals and um, what might happen, what might not happen. I, it's just not really the, the mindset or the thought process I try to have or what's happened in the past. It's just how can I be better tomorrow and make the most of this opportunity? It's not going to last forever. And um, 
special place to play with great players, a great team, an organization that's all in every year. So, um, yeah, we're just I, I don't I don't really think about it a whole lot. I think it's just disappointed it didn't work out last year um, or, or the previous years. Now it's like, what's the next opportunity? How can we grow? How can we get better? You know, from a personal standpoint, I've been to the, you know, the second round once in 12 years. So I, I don't personally carry that burden on around um, because that's happened. It's just kind of the way that it's gone. That doesn't mean I haven't done everything I possibly can to get to where I am now. So I think just continuing to know that uh, we have a great, great potential here, great opportunity, and go out there and try to make the most of it. And there's a, there's a lot that goes into it, a lot of hard work, and that's all we're going to try to focus on. And just quickly, the, the the NHL and the NHLPA haven't mandated vaccines, but they made it pretty difficult for guys to not to not be vaccinated. What's your, have you sort of seen this play out, and, and what's sort of your sense of, of how the process has played out? And you know, they're hoping for 95, 98 percent, but but just how it's all sort of gone with, it's not a rule, but it, it kind of is. Yeah, I mean, that's not really my field of expertise um, in terms of uh, public health and, and um, you know, dealing with the pandemic and the, the measures to take. I think, um, you know, the league's obviously trying to operate as, as safe as possible and trying to encourage uh, uh, the safest possible environment in the safest, in the safest ways. So um, they've obviously encouraged that and tried to minim minimize risk to... Um, keep everybody safe and to make sure that uh, obviously um, everything functions uh, accordingly in terms of the season and the schedule and all those types of things. So, um, but obviously it's everyone, anyone's choice to, to determine what they feel is best for them. I can't speak for, can't speak for everyone. I can only speak for myself. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I think you can make an argument on both sides. Um, you know, that's the, what the pandemic's really been all about. It's, it's, been, it's been a very difficult situation uh, all the way through and even up until now. So I think everyone's trying to make the best decisions that they possibly can to do the, do the, do the right thing. Thanks, John. Thank you. Also, I guess last thing I wanted to say is, uh, forgot to mention it, uh, opening statement was just how excited I think myself and we all are just to play in front of our fans again and our fan base. It, uh, I know for me, I didn't get to play, obviously, the, the couple games that were fans in the building, but uh, just uh, uh, to have that again, I think is going to be pretty remarkable and pretty special and uh, have truly missed it. And, and we know uh, what Leafs Nation means to our team and to this organization. So um, just a message for our fans, just how, look, how much we're looking forward to having that again. So thank you.